Hello, my name is Jimmy Carr, and in 2009, I was telling jokes. I mean, uh, in a very literal sense, because I made a DVD called Jimmy Carr Telling Jokes. I don't know how to explain DVDs to you if you're if you're under a certain age. They, they were like, uh, uh, they, they were they were more trouble than they're worth. Now you can watch it for free. Just enjoy yourselves. Well, ladies and gentlemen, great show, great audience, great venue. One of those would have been nice. <laughs> I went for a wander around earlier. Someone came up to me and went, well, see your last show. I said, oh, thanks very much. And then he added, at least I hope it was your last show. <laughs> With your fucking mates. <laughs> people often ask me how I do this for a living. How do you get up in front of people for an hour and a half or two hours and tell them jokes? It must be petrifying. Well, the secret is, yeah, what you do, if you're doing any kind of public speaking, this really works. What you do, you imagine the people you're talking to are naked. Yeah, it really works. A couple of things to remember. Firstly, don't tell the people you're talking to that's what you're doing. because that could be a little bit creepy. <laughs> and secondly, it doesn't work as well if you work in a primary school. <laughs> Someone came up to me and said, I don't want to hurt your feelings, but you look like Jimmy Carr. <laughs> How am I supposed to not take that personally? That's my face. <laughs> That's all I've got to work with. I realise I've got quite a broad face. I've got quite good girth on my face. And girth is not a term traditionally associated with an attractive face. <laughs> you know those things you get by the seaside, the big cardboard cutout thing by the seaside? Big fat jolly man in an all-in-one red and white striped suit running down Skegness Beach. You know the one? And they cut the face out so you can stick your head through, take a hilarious holiday photo. Well, when I stick my head through one of those, it just looks right. <laughs> I look like a Down syndrome Roger Federer. <laughs> I wish that wasn't funny. <laughs> I wish they didn't ring true, but sadly. <laughs> I bought a rape alarm, cos I kept on forgetting when to rape people. <laughs> They're bloody marvellous. Um, I was going to tell you a little bit about behind the scenes. Not behind the scenes here at the Bloomsbury Theatre, cos there's fuck all going on back there. <laughs> but behind the scenes more generally. You know in television commercials, when they use chimpanzees to advertise tea and whatnot, because we'll buy anything if chimpanzees were involved, because chimpanzees are adorable. Well, what they do when they're filming a commercial with chimpanzees is they give the chimpanzees peanut butter, and the peanut butter sticks to the roof of the mouth of the chimpanzee, makes the chimpanzee go... Because <coughs> they're not used to the peanut They quite like it, but they're not used to it, so it makes them go... <coughs> makes it look as if the chimpanzee is talking. Well, that's also how they make Hollyoaks. <laughs> Interesting fact for you. Are you having to explain that to her? <laughs> oh! It's clearly a mixed ability group. <laughs> Sorry, you'll give me a look there as if to say, it is good, though. <laughs> I told my best friend I fucked his wife and got her pregnant. That cured his hiccups. <laughs> I'm in a long-term relationship. Who else here is in a long-term relationship? Give us a shout. <laughs> oh, those are, you sound thrilled. <laughs> I've been with the same girl for eight years and we're very happy together, but how's this for mental? She still gets annoyed if I use her toothbrush. That's mental, isn't it? When you consider how intimate we've been over those eight years. And if you can tell me a better way to get dog shit out trainers... <laughs> I'd love to fucking hear about it, because there's nothing final. <laughs> Dog excrement can blind a child. But it's much easier just to use a finger. 
If you really want to be sure, smear dog shit all over both fingers. <laughs> From the shoulder, jab. <laughs> there are a lot of obese children in Britain today, but focus on the positive, the pensions crisis is over. <laughs> Oh, on those tubby little fucks, I'm going to see 40. <laughs> Never mind 65. There's <laughs> quite a lot of young people in. If you're young and your parents are getting divorced, it can be a very difficult time. But remember, it's not your fault. Your mum's a slag. <laughs> <laughs> it's pretty bad being told you're adopted. But not as bad as being told, you're going to be adopted. <laughs> Did you know, if your ears are burning, it means people are talking about you. Generally, they're saying, he's on fire. <laughs> are you all familiar with Simon Cowell? Do you know Simon Cowell? Yeah. Simon Cowell spends £500,000 every year on his own personal security. That's an extraordinary amount of money, isn't it? Half a million pounds a year on personal security. Has Simon not considered being less of a cunt? <laughs> what happened there? You were saying that you liked my joke? Well, thanks very much. It's <laughs> very nice of you. I was chatting to these men that were having a conversation in front of you, but that's fine. You've, <laughs> You've caught my eye now. What do you do, for... madam? I work for Nationwide. You work for Nationwide in Human Resources? I imagine you've been saying to people, well, you're fired quite a lot recently. <laughs> we have done fucked up the country. Fuck off. <laughs> right, good on you. Human Resources, the, the lady sciences. I was talking about Simon Cowell there. Simon Cowell, uh, people knock the X Factor and they knock Britain's Got Talent, but the way I see it, someone's got to turn the Christmas lights on in Stoke. <laughs> and it's not going to be me. <laughs> Again this year. <laughs> I'm 36 years of age. You know what that means? It means the only way I get to be described as young now is if I die. <laughs> I think you know you're getting old. I was watching porn last week, I found myself thinking... That bed looks comfy. <laughs> the worst thing about being told you've got Alzheimer's is it doesn't just happen the once. <laughs> and I'll be telling that joke again later on. <laughs> if I remember. Of course, a lot of people try and fight the ageing process. A lot of people use anti-wrinkle creams. Anyone here use anti-wrinkle cream? Yeah. A few, a few of you. Is that a fella up there? <laughs> you know they're meant to be wrinkly. Now, my question to the ladies that use the anti-wrinkle cream, if it really works, how come you've still got fingerprints? <laughs> yeah, that's right, I made you look a fool. <laughs> I saw a thing on the cover of Elle magazine, you're all familiar with Elle magazine for the ladies, it said on the cover, what to buy and how to wear it. Buy a dress and zip it up, you fucking moron. <laughs> what kind of idiots are reading Elle magazine? Who's standing in a newsagent, naked, thinking, help? <laughs> A lot of women worry about one breast being smaller than the other. But focus on the positive. One of them is bigger. <laughs> and we call that one our favourite. <laughs> this is interesting. There's an evolutionary reason why men love breasts. It's because prehistoric men loved breasts. <laughs> Have you noticed this, ladies? All men have got obsessive-compulsive disorder when it comes to boobs. Have you noticed that? All men have got OCD when it comes to breasts. No man has ever kissed and caressed a breast, yeah? Mm. <laughs> All right, not a brilliant mime, I'm sorry. <laughs> that looked like I was cracking a safe... <laughs> ..whilst trying to get the temperature right in a hotel shower. <laughs> Pretty multitasking. <laughs> Turn on the taps, test the water. That's how <laughs> That's how I remember it. That's very much foreplay for beginners. <laughs> Not ready yet. 
Not ready yet. Oh, like a fucking slip and slide. Bang. <laughs> Sorry, I got rather sidetracked there. What I was saying was, <laughs> no man has ever kissed and caressed a breast and then not done exactly the same thing for exactly the same duration of time to the other boob. It's like we think your breasts are sentient beings and they'll be annoyed if we've got a favourite. <laughs> One of your tits will be sat there going, hmm, she has all the fun, does she? <laughs> yeah, a sneaky little drink. Hang on, one sec. Oh. Do feel free to heckle if you want. There's a lot of jokes, but you can... You lost too much weight, Jimmy. What, sorry? I've lost too much weight. I put weight on. I was eight pounds. <laughs> I don't know what's the matter with me. <laughs> also, if we're going to sort of be, I don't know, maybe concerned about others' personal appearances... <laughs> maybe the man that looks like a microphone... <laughs> ..shouldn't be talking. What do you do for a living? So you look as if you should be a drummer in a band. I am in a band. You are in a band. Of course you're in a band. <laughs> of course. Be, there's no other excuse for that. <laughs> Not that a lot of people don't like my hair. A lot of people think I wear a wig. <coughs> or it's a comb-over or something. I haven't got a comb-over. Well, not there. <laughs> I do have one massive pube that I just loop around. <laughs> it's quite something. You would enjoy it. <laughs> what, what band do you in? You're an origami dinosaur? <laughs> oh, my God! They're, like, my favourite band. Oh, hang on, I'm thinking of Coldplay. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> we'll check in again with origami dinosaur later. <laughs> Mortgages. Mortgages are getting more expensive, but you try explaining to a homeless person how lucky they are. <laughs> I'm trying to read up about the credit crunch. The papers aren't making it easy. The Independent last week had a headline. It just said, inflation goes up. <laughs> I was going to write in and ask, do the wheels on the bus still go round and round? <laughs> of course, the credit crunch is causing pensioners to be hit hardest. <laughs> well, let go of the handbag then, Nana. <laughs> Doesn't have to be this way. <laughs> Hang on, I'll have a little swig of water. I deserve it, I feel. Uh, hmm. Hmm? <laughs> well, thanks, for, thanks very much for that, ladies and gentlemen. That could have been a fucking terrorist. <laughs> she could be here to get... This could be Serin Gash. She's... I don't even know who the fuck that is. She's got a nice arse. She's got a nice ass. <laughs> Apparently, you've got a nut. Not... I don't think it's really the time. I often get asked what's the worst heckle. Now, occasionally, at a gig like this, someone will shout, ''Fuck off your shit!'' <laughs> and I'll think, ''Oh, if I had £20 for every time that happened.'' <laughs> I do know the story of the worst heckle of all time. It happened to a lady called Pia Zadora, a very beautiful and talented actress in her prime. This happened years and years later. She hadn't worked in 20 years in Hollywood, and she wanted to be taken seriously as an actress because her looks had faded over the years, so she decided to put on a play, invite loads of people to the play, they would come along, see the show, and, and think, well, she's brilliant, well, let's put her in the movies. Great idea. She put on the Anne Frank Diaries. <laughs> so it's the Anne Frank Diary. There's no sequel, spoiler alert for you. <laughs> She cast herself as Anne Frank. She was 55 at the time and, crucially, not Jewish. <laughs> it's like me playing Winnie Mandela. It's terrible <laughs> casting. So the play was meant to run for six weeks and she was going to invite all the Los Angeles kind of glitterati down to see the performance and make a big deal of it. It ran for two nights. Cos on the second night, 40 minutes in, someone from the back shouted, ''She's in the attic!'' <laughs> How bad's that? <laughs> How bad does the theatrical performance have to be that it made an audience member collaborate with the Nazis? <laughs> do you need to go wee wee, you're right. I do actually. You do? Well, don't worry, don't panic, go. I'm talking about it with everyone. I, I know, I heard, I'm fucking here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's fine. Directions? <laughs> not really my department, mate. <laughs> you know where it is? You know where your winkle is? <laughs> Boy, I think the exit's probably the one. Can I move you people all up one and then we've still got the camera shot? He can sit at the end when he comes back. Because otherwise they'll say to me, oh, the fucking shot's gone. <laughs> well, you all move up one. 
Is, it, is that seat damp? You're right. <laughs> When the Iraq war started, little did President Bush know. <laughs> now he's left office, Bush is going to devote the next two years to finishing his book. He can't believe that caterpillar is still hungry. <laughs> a lot of people don't like the fact that Tony Blair, now he's stopped being Prime Minister, is now making £10 million a year on the international lecture circuit. But I don't mind, I think it's fair enough. You know, he's got mouths to feed, one of which is enormous. <laughs> What did you guys make of Barack Obama getting in? What do you think? Yeah. Pretty, pretty good day, wasn't it? Yeah. I watched it all day on the news, that inauguration. Two million people turning up in Washington to see history being made. And all the pundits were queuing up to describe Barack Obama. And they all said the same thing. They all described Barack Obama as being like a cross between JFK and Martin Luther King. I thought, yeah, we get it. He's going to get shot. <laughs> you might as well call him the new Jill Dando. <laughs> What did you make of Hillary Clinton? Because she came that close, didn't she? She was that close to the biggest job in the world, President of the United States of America. Yeah, she's been an inspiration to women all over the world. She's shown women everywhere that there are limits. <laughs> back in your box. <laughs> Thank God you're back. You, you've got to sit at the end. No, no, no. <laughs> no, you've got to sit at the end. We move, we move them all along so we have the camera shot. Mongo, don't try and pick a fight. <laughs> Just sit down there in the empty seat. Don't pick on him, he's clearly very ill. <laughs> <laughs> don't panic, we've got security. <laughs> You'll be fine, you're my new favourite. <laughs> Because you've got a bladder like a mouse's purse. <laughs> <laughs> It'll be fine. As soon as the floodgates open, then this has got to happen. Every 15 minutes, I'll be out there again another 15 minutes. <laughs> Was that a very long word? <laughs> or were you slurring everything into one? You can now buy a baby monitor with a range of one mile. <laughs> If anyone's thinking, that sounds good, you shouldn't be allowed children. <laughs> Did you read about the 65-year-old woman having a baby? 65 years of age and she had a baby. I thought, how badly did she want to see on the bus? <laughs> Did you all see the story about the man having a baby? That was the headline around the world. Man has a baby. Not really, though, was it? Because it was a man with a fully operational vagina and womb. <laughs> so, womb man. <laughs> As a baby. <laughs> womb man sounds a bit clunky. What could we shorten that to? <laughs> oh, I know. Woman. <laughs> the headline should have been Incredibly Ugly Woman Has a Baby. <laughs> and that happens all the time. That's what beer is for. <laughs> he was interviewed. This guy, Thomas Beatty, was interviewed. He said, just because I don't have a penis doesn't make me any less of a man. <laughs> <laughs> That's exactly what it means. You are precisely eight and a half inches less of a man. <laughs> Just to clarify, he was he was a, he was a man like like you and I. He was a man, but he didn't have a he didn't have a Mr. Tinkle. <laughs> he didn't have a tummy banana. <laughs> but he was a man, so he had a man fanny, a manny, <laughs> a mange, <laughs> a mash, <laughs> a manhole. <laughs> A month. <laughs> it can be a bit depressing being a single man. It can be can be a bit of a bore like. I've got an inspirational story. This will cheer you up. It concerns my friend Emily. She's she's beautiful. <laughs> Who the fucking hell is he? <laughs> I tell you what, video piracy is becoming a real fucking problem. <laughs> this is not acceptable. <laughs> I get asked this from time to time. By broadsheet newspapers, proper journalists ask, what celebrity would you most like to have sex with? Well, Angelina Jolie, I would love to have a go about. Oh, sorry, <laughs> Angelina Jolie. I got excited about it, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> oh, what celebrity would I most like to have sex with? <laughs> oh, I've lost the ability to speak. That'll come in handy. <laughs> Is there a growth on my face? 
<laughs> what? Oh, hello. How are you? You all right? How are we doing for time? You all right? Okay. Oh, do you not have one of these? <laughs> what? Seriously, you don't have? You don't have one of these? You should get one. You're hey, just... doing her. What? Sorry? Are you? <laughs> no, she was touching my face. <laughs> I realised you're a bit confused. <laughs> Are you doing her? <laughs> What's it like? <laughs> Do you have any pictures? <laughs> oh, bless his little heart. My partner is always saying to me, "You never tell me how you feel." About two, three times a week, she'll say that to me. She'll go. You never tell me how you feel. What is she talking about? <laughs> Only yesterday, I woke her up by slapping her in the face with my cock. <laughs> how much clearer can I be? <laughs> this means I'm horny. <laughs> Sorry, sir, we made eye contact there. I didn't mean anything by that. <laughs> <laughs> I was by the seaside recently, and I was thinking about rising sea levels. And this guy next to me was throwing stones into the water. I thought, well, that's not helping. <laughs> if anything, you're making matters worse. <laughs> Any Welsh people in? Any Welsh? Yeah. Oh, it's quite a few. Well, we seem to have contained the problem. <laughs> I'm loving the Welsh. I like the Welsh language. And I like the Welsh language because it was clearly invented by a dad losing at Scrabble. <laughs> Clearly, what's happened there. That's not a word, it starts with three L's. <laughs> it is a bloody word. <laughs> well, how's it pronounced? <laughs> <laughs> I was in North Wales uh, last year, I was in Landidno. Has anyone been to Landidno? Yeah. Oh, if, if it's a no, you don't have to answer, that's it. <laughs> I'll ask again. Has anyone been to Landidno? Yeah. Oh, a few of you have been. It's a lovely town. I was there anyway doing a show. Got on stage, walked out, I said, it's lovely to be in Landidno. This guy, front and centre, where you're sitting there, face like fucking thunder, <laughs> went, it's not Landidno, <laughs> you bloody fool. <laughs> it's Clandidno. <laughs> in Wales, the double L is pronounced with a C. <laughs> I said, all right, don't be a lunt about it. <laughs> Well, ladies and gentlemen, this is what I do for a living. I think of little jokes in my head, and then I tell them to you so that you'll like me. <laughs> Sounds a bit tragic when I say, <laughs> what was that? It's not working. <laughs> well, you can fuck off. <laughs> this is as good as it ever fucking goes. <laughs> I don't come to your work and knock the sailor's cocks out of your mouth, do I? <laughs> Where are you? It's not working, man. Give us a wave. <laughs> what do you do, sir? You, you do telecoms. <laughs> what, what do you do? Do you? I do you. I do you, <laughs> I do you telephone. <laughs> what, sorry? Build you build them in their work. <laughs> Ironically, you work in communications and can hardly... <laughs> ..can hardly string a fucking sentence together. Well, broadly speaking, as I say, this is what I do for a living. Sometimes it doesn't quite work out, cos sometimes I'll have an idea for a joke, and then I'll sort of look at it in the morning and go... You know, if I've scribbled it down on a bit of paper at four in the morning, I'll look at it in the morning and go, well, it's sort of half a joke, but it's not the funny half. <laughs> sort of a bit more... A, a bit more, you know, challenging. It's a bit more esoteric and oblique. It means difficult to understand. <laughs> Make an effort, Mongo. <laughs> so I thought we might go through some of these, right? Um, I've got visual aids. <laughs> I realise it sounds bad when I say it like that. I don't mean I was walking through a park and I saw two homosexual men having sex and a bit must have got in my eye. <laughs> and now I've got all aids eyes. I don't mean that. I mean I've got some pictures to help. These are slightly more challenging, bear with me. <laughs> if a giant ape and a table tennis champion got into an argument over a karaoke machine, would the newspaper headline be King Kong, Ping Pong, Sing Song, Ding Dong? <laughs> I 
I'm writing a diet book. It's called Put That Down, Fatty. <laughs> Pedophilia is wrong. It's paedophilia. <laughs> of course, the main cause of paedophilia, good-looking kids. <laughs> Could you blame them? I was adorable. <laughs> Do you realise if you put your teeth in Coca-Cola overnight, you'll drown? <laughs> People actually believe Neil Armstrong was the first man on the moon. Bullshit. It was Mr Takeshi, a gardener from Nagasaki, who was standing next to where the bomb landed. <laughs> Too soon? They say it's bad luck to put up an umbrella indoors, but I think if it's raining indoors, you've already had your bad luck. <laughs> the problem with unidentified flying objects, UFOs, is if they identify them, they're just flying objects, FOs. And then if they land, it's just no. <laughs> I saw an O. Oh. <laughs> lofts. Lofts are magical places where it's always Christmas. It only happens once a year, but when I collect the Christmas tree in the car, it looks like I've overdone it on the air freshener. <laughs> if we are going to put an end to global poverty, now is the time to stock up on trainers. <laughs> I'm joking. We're not going to put an end to global poverty. <laughs> they now make non-alcoholic cider. Now, correct me if I'm wrong, that's apple juice. <laughs> One in three Scottish women is clinically obese, as are the other two. <laughs> when you think about it, a bowls club full of pensioners is like an upside-down graveyard. <laughs> if ever I'm in a cemetery, I like to think that's what's going on underneath. <laughs> Whenever I talk to an old person, I always think, what a privilege. But they never thank me. <laughs> Of course, talking to an old person is like having access to living history, which is a lot like normal history, but reeks of piss. <laughs> there is a law that states pregnant women can urinate anywhere they want. Brilliant news. I think my nana might be pregnant. <laughs> the big shopping centre near us is called Lakeside, and my girlfriend said the other day, Lakeside is so crowded, no one goes there anymore. We were in the car, she said, where would we be without sat-nav? <laughs> I was looking after a friend's cat while my friends went on holiday and I was worried about overfeeding the cat, so I asked her about it because I thought, well, she'll know about that sort of thing. Here's what she said. She said, don't worry, cats aren't pigs like dogs. <laughs> what the fuck does that mean? <laughs> cats aren't pigs like dogs. <laughs> Good, well, that's really clarifying. <laughs> I used to have table football in the house. We had foosball in the front room of the house. It was brilliant. Then she moved in. She hated it. She said it was too blokey. So what I did was I filled the table football up with water and now we play synchronised swimming. <laughs> she came home the other day. She was all excited. She was thrilled with herself. She said, I saw a man with one platform shoe. I said, no, you saw a man with a club foot. <laughs> no one's got one platform shoe. No one's half into 70s fashion. <laughs> Unless it was Heather Mills on the way home from a disco. <laughs> Probably not. <laughs> a friend of mine dresses his Labrador in a yellow fluorescent jacket and takes it everywhere he goes. It looks ridiculous. Is he blind? <laughs> <laughs> Don't worry, he's never going to see the show. <laughs> Why do deaf people watch TV so late at night? Is it because they always sleep through the alarm? <laughs> I'm not sure if it counts as incest, but I'm pretty sure when I was growing up, my dad was fucking my mum. <laughs> I woke up with an erection this morning. On reflection, I wish it had been my own. Saw a headline in the paper, it said, Homeless shelter burns down. 
I thought, well, what are they now? <laughs> Homeless, sir? <laughs> no, they were trapped inside. They're all dead. <laughs> if you know the difference between a kayak and a canoe, you probably don't know what it's like to have sex. <laughs> The highest speed ever achieved on a bicycle was done by a British man, 146 miles per hour on a bicycle. That is pretty impressive. It was recorded at a level crossing. <laughs> Still counts. The Great Wall of China, longest wall in the world, not one cash point. Some people think Islamic fundamentalism is a very real threat. What I want to know is when are the Salvation Army going to step up to the plate? <laughs> <laughs> the most commonly shoplifted book in the world is the Bible. Yeah. Which sounds weird, but then makes perfect sense, because how are you meant to know not to steal it till you've read it? <laughs> I got handed a leaflet in the street saying, God loved you so much he nailed himself to a cross. I thought, what? One-handed? <laughs> The Pope, the Pope doesn't approve of condoms, which is fair enough, he's entitled to his opinion. But how does he suggest I smuggle cocaine? <laughs> if I went on to Dragon's Den, I would pitch the dragons a device that makes you less of a self-satisfied smug cunt. <laughs> I've discovered there's a big difference between having something engraved for someone and having something of theirs keyed. <laughs> to rejoice in someone else's misfortune, the Germans call it schadenfreude. We call it, you've been framed. <laughs> they say revenge is best served cold, and they say revenge is sweet. So really what they're saying is, revenge is ice cream. I think it goes without saying. <laughs> I'm glad you agree. Um, <laughs> I was tempted just to go for 40 minutes. That would have been, oh, that would have been terrifically funny or shit. <laughs> Maybe shit. Um, I've had an idea for a children's book. I was going to run it past you. It's an idea for a children's book. It's about a boy that can see into the future after he gets raped by a unicorn. <laughs> for a bittersweet. <laughs> we don't have an ensuite bathroom, but we do have plastic sheets. <laughs> if anything, it's more convenient. <laughs> I was in the cinema and something struck me. I think it was a peanut M&M. <laughs> I'm a great driver. Last year, I got 25 points. <laughs> if you're Scottish and you don't want to know how you're going to die, look away now. Heart disease. <laughs> when my doctor told me I had heart problems, I took it with a pinch of salt. <laughs> to cut a long story short, Frodo does it. <laughs> Well, we've just done, ladies and gentlemen, somewhere in the region of 60 jokes in 10 minutes. That's quite a lot of jokes per minute. That represents value for money during the credit crunch, I believe. <laughs> well done, me. What I've been trying to do is write the shortest joke possible so I can pack even more jokes into the show. So last year in the show, I had a four-word joke. It's only four words long, but it's a proper joke. Yeah. Venison's dear, isn't it? <laughs> it's only four words. That doesn't fuck about. It gets straight to the point. <laughs> So this year I thought, well, I'll go one louder. I'll attempt a three-word joke. So for your delight and delectation, stationary store moves. <laughs> Clearly not impressive enough. I will now attempt a two-word joke. Dwarf shortage. <laughs> Have you ever had this? My girlfriend made me fire our cleaner because she said the cleaner was too good looking and she didn't want her in the house. How mental is that? She was a really good cleaner. She was especially good at getting spunk out of hair. <laughs> <laughs>
Did you know every day nearly 4,000 serious sexual assaults occur in my mind? <laughs> In America, in Oklahoma, where that fertiliser bomb went off, they've now got a garden of remembrance. <laughs> and it has come up a treat. <laughs> so, every cloud. <laughs> These kids in American high schools, I'm sure you've read about them, 14, 15, 16 years of age, they go into their high school with automatic weapons and handguns, they go apeshit. They shoot 20 or 30 of their fellow pupils before turning one of the guns on themselves. What is their fucking problem? <laughs> Do they not know where the staff room is? <laughs> they could be heroes! <laughs> There's two ways to stop bullying. As I see it, ladies and gentlemen, there are two ways to stop the bullying. Firstly, you can stop the bullies. Well, that's been tried. Secondly, you can stop the kids that are being bullied from being such faggy dicks. <laughs> and really, the best way to do that is bullying. <laughs> My what, sorry? Was I bullied at school? <coughs> no. <laughs> what, sorry? You are a faggy twat. But I am a faggy twat. <laughs> We're all having fun, I'll just open this can of whoop ass. <laughs> Pop that there. You're remarkably uh, confident for a man in, in some sort of hooded top. <laughs> what do you do for a living, sir? Do you mind me asking? I'm a student. You're a student, and what, what are you studying? Uh, I'm still in the secondary school in Ireland. You're still in secondary school <laughs> in Ireland? <laughs> and what do you want to be when you grow up? <laughs> What, sorry? A lawyer. You want to be a lawyer? So you know you're a cunt, you're going down that road. <laughs> and who are you here with this evening? I'm alone. You're alone? <laughs> so, so far, we know you're alone... <laughs> ..and you're a bit of a cunt. <laughs> I'm liking you, frankly. <laughs> What's your name, sir? Chris. Chris. Hi, Chris. You all right? And have you just come over for the show, or have you come over for the weekend? Just come over for the show. Well, God bless you, Chris. Feel free to join in any time you want. <laughs> the more aggressive, the better, frankly. <laughs> I quite like it. <laughs> Chris bullied me. <laughs> <laughs> yes, you will be. Uh, <laughs> If you're being bullied because you've got a speech impediment, maybe you're from the Republic of Ireland. Uh... <laughs> now, if you're being bullied because you've got a speech impediment, there are people you can talk to. <laughs> <laughs> but it will take fucking ages. <laughs> and they may giggle a bit. <laughs> I had a friend, she had a speech impediment. It was quite a severe sort of lispy thing. She was bullied so mercilessly at her job that she left. She's moved down to the coast now to work in the tourism industry. She sells seashells by the seashore. <laughs> she doesn't like to talk about it. <laughs> she can't. <laughs> if you've got a lisp and you're offended by that, foey. <laughs> Sorry, I'm making light of something quite serious. Let's try and lighten the mood, shall we? Let's lighten the mood a little bit. When I read about that Austrian fella... <laughs> it was bound to come up, wasn't it? When I read about Joseph Fritzl building a cellar under his house to imprison his own daughter for 24 years so he could systematically torture and abuse two generations of his own family, here's my first thought. This is how middle class I am. My first thought was, I bet he didn't have planning permission for that. <laughs> oh, we'd all like to add some square footage, but there are some fucking rules, mate. <laughs> Has anyone in here ever tried any DIY? Give us a shout if you've ever tried any kind of DIY, yes? Yeah, yeah. Most everyone's tried. Can anyone who's ever tried DIY, hand on heart, tell me they don't have a little bit of admiration for the work that Fritzl did. <laughs> it's not easy building stuff, is it? It's not easy to be a tidy workman. I'm not saying I approve of what he did down there, but he built a cellar without his wife even fucking noticing. <laughs> I'm just saying credit where credit is due. Oh, 
a round of applause for a Fritzel joke. <laughs> you may be my kind of town. <laughs> he was described in uh, the Daily Express newspaper as the most evil man in Austrian history. <laughs> Not even close. <laughs> Hitler. <laughs> Exam standards are coming down in this country. <laughs> but focus on the positive, we do very well in pregnancy tests. <laughs> I'm not being snobbish, but I think you know you're common if you're at the same school as your mum. <laughs> this is a bit snobbish. You get annoyed by kids that can't use cutlery properly. That irritates me, if they can't use cutlery properly. Oh. And that would add insult to injury, wouldn't it? If you got stabbed by some asbo yob. <laughs> and they were holding the knife like a pen. <laughs> I'd be fucking livid. <laughs> Do it again, this time properly. <laughs> Caravan holidays. Caravan holidays are a fun way of telling your kids you're poor. <laughs> Most people laughing, a couple of you giving me the stink eye. <laughs> giving me a look as if to say, it's actually quite a posh caravan. <laughs> it's a sixth birth and we go to Cornwall, so whatever. <laughs> Just one question for you. On your holidays, do you shit in a cupboard? <laughs> mm. <laughs> you just about cracked a smile, but it really took some effort. <laughs> What's your name, madam? What's your name? It's not the telly. I can, I can see you. <laughs> What's your name? Camilla. Camilla. And what do you do, Camilla? I suppose it depends on the guy. <laughs> I'm only messing about. Just you look all dressed up for this sort of show, this kind of filth. Maybe he told you, well, we're going to go and see a theatre show in the West End of London. You went, fucking brilliant. <laughs> you probably didn't even say fucking. You probably went, marvellous. <laughs> Mar the West End of London, a theatre show. This will be, oh, a bit of class. And he's finally... And then you... This, and you're going, for fuck's sake. <laughs> you bought the ticket, and how do you two know each other? That's your mum. That's your mum? Well, you, 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 don't, you, you don't even look like... You look as if you could be sisters. <laughs> you don't look young, she looks fucking old. <laughs> you let yourself go. I can't help myself. It's some sort of trap. I love the fact you've just turned around and go, does she? <laughs> What have you done to yourself there? You've got a little thing on your... Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I told you. What did you do? You've got, he's got a little bandage on his face yeah. there. What, what have you done? I had a growth cut there. You had a growth cut <laughs> off your face? <laughs> oh, sexy. <laughs> wow. It'll look, It'll look better after. No, I, I like the little thing. It's very, very macho. You could make up a better story than that, I feel. <laughs> There's got to be a better story than I had a growth. I had a black eye a while back. I had a black eye because um, I was playing tennis. I got a tennis ball in the face, so I got a black eye. Obviously, that's a shit story. So what I said to people initially was, you should see the other bloke. <laughs> Fun for about half an hour. And then I hit upon this. People said, what happened to your eye? I go, you should see my wife. <laughs> you can visit her, she's in hospital. <laughs> See, it's all class, this, Camilla. <coughs> Wife beating. Oh. <laughs> Good. Well, we'll check in with you from time to time. Check you're happy. Good. I read that drinking your own urine is meant to be good for you. Bullshit. <laughs> I put my back out. Just a little tip for you, if you ever find yourself in front of 500 people you don't know that well, <laughs> miming drinking piss out your own cock, <laughs> make it a double-hander. <laughs> what do you do? I didn't ask. What do you do? Uh, I have a diving school in Indonesia. You have a diving school in Indonesia? <laughs> wow! <laughs> I mean, I've heard some tall stories that paedophiles tell. <laughs> You're a sexual tourist. You disgust me. <laughs> what kind of diving? 
That sounds fucking great. Cool. Well done, you. I was going to go diving in Indonesia last year, but I, uh, I read this thing online that said you can you can get a thing where fucking <laughs> rope on your face. Tiny little things irritate me in life. I don't know if you get this, but really quite trivial things annoy me. You know when you go into a fish and chip shop, let's say on a Friday, right, and the guy in an all too chirpy voice, it's the chirpiness that gets me, goes, as you walk in, he goes, chips will be five minutes. What? <laughs> what do you mean the chips are going to be five minutes? Did you not think I was going to order chips? <laughs> it's a chip shop. The clue's very much in the name. <laughs> this is the one scenario you, you really should have been prepared for. <laughs> It's like when you go into a Greg's or any high street bakery. Go into any high street bakery at four o'clock in the afternoon and they will say, in the same voice, wherever you go in the country, they'll go, we've run out of rolls. <laughs> and then they'll explain it, they'll go, load the people came in at lunch and had rolls. <laughs> now we've run out. <laughs> like there was nothing they could do. <laughs> I sometimes get it in Starbucks. Do you go into Starbucks? I love Starbucks, I love the posh coffee. You walk in there though, at the end of the day and they'll go, We've turned the coffee machine off. <laughs> we'll turn it back on, fuck knuckle. <laughs> I didn't come in for a chat, I want a fucking coffee. <laughs> I sometimes get it in department stores at the end of the day. You know, if you're in a big department store at the end of the day, you'll get from behind the counter quite a snooty voice. Excuse me, we're closed. <laughs> you find yourself thinking, well, how did I get in here? <laughs> My burglar. <laughs> I don't want to be a burglar. <laughs> Do you go into McDonald's? You might go in there later on. You might need a poo. <laughs> Have you noticed how underneath McDonald's it still says restaurant? <laughs> Who's that for? <laughs> Who doesn't know what McDonald's do? And also, restaurant. Is it a restaurant? Really? <laughs> uh, you guys are a couple, right? How long have you been together? A year and a bit. Okay, so a long-term relationship, a year and a bit, you've been together. How annoyed would you be, madam, on a scale between one and fucking very... <laughs> ..if next Valentine's he said to you, uh, Yeah, I booked a restaurant, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I spoke to the maitre d'. Yeah. Ronald, I think his name was. <laughs> he was either the maitre d' or a five-star general, cos he had the whole bit, aren't you? <laughs> I've organised a table for two and he recommends the filet fish <laughs> You'd fucking kill him, wouldn't you? And who doesn't know what McDonald's do at this stage? You'd have to be living underground for 25 fucking years. <laughs> Was ist das? <laughs> Hamburger. <laughs> Schnitzel. Schnitzel for the Fritzer. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I got stopped outside of McDonald's. This guy said to me the other day, he said, this cheap food is only made possible by GM farming, cruelty to animals and the exploitation of workers in the third world. I said, all right, hold up. You had me at cheap food. <laughs> I'm going in, there's no need for the hard sell. <laughs> All that other stuff is just a bonus. <laughs> Do you get this? Do you get the super patronising warning from the waiter about the hot plate? Do you get that when you go out for a meal? Yeah. yeah. The, the, it arrives and the waiter goes, be careful, the plates are very hot. <laughs> you think, yeah, I'm a grown-up, I think I can operate a plate. <laughs> also, I can't help but notice, Mr Patronising Waiter, you just put it down with your hand. <laughs> but it's too hot for my little fingers. <laughs> Tell you what, Mr. Patronising Waiter, should we see if it's hot? Shall we? Ah! <laughs> it's really hot. I don't want to be a dick, but you should have said. <laughs> In show business, they say never work with children or animals, and nowhere is that truer than porno. <laughs> no one likes looking at sick and degrading pornography more than me. <laughs> And, and one friend I have who has a diving school. <laughs> Any gay priests in? <laughs> no, I'm just, for those of you that don't know the collective noun for gay priests, priests. <laughs> it's an easy one to remember, isn't it? 
No, because gay priests were in the news, because if you're a gay priest, you can now marry another gay priest, and they weren't allowed to for ages, because it was going to be confusing during the ceremony, because would they say, do you take this man, or... <laughs> does he... take you? <laughs> <laughs> Who's the mummy? <laughs> Seems a bit awkward. I'd like to meet a gay priest, though, because normally priests do that sort of nomine patre, filio fish thing, whatever that is. <laughs> I imagine a gay priest to be a little bit more... <laughs> a little bit more razzmatazz. <laughs> Jesus Christ, you look amazing. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna kneel down before you. <laughs> what? Come on. <laughs> Jesus was definitely a fag. <laughs> what, he hung out with 12 sailors? <laughs> Fisherman, whatever. <laughs> I'm going away, we're having a dinner, no girls. <laughs> <laughs> and he had a six pack. Oh. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I've got a family pack. <laughs> nice. Um, the church wanted to move forward on female bishops, but bishops can only move diagonally. <laughs> Gay priests can move wherever they want because they are queens. <laughs> Altogether or not at all on the applause. <laughs> Otherwise, we've got to throw you a fucking fish. <laughs> well, thanks very much. I, I don't believe in God. I'm, I'm, I'm actually an atheist. Well, not even an atheist. Sorry, I don't believe in God seems a bit obvious now after the Jesus is a fag comment. <laughs> but I, I, I don't believe in God. I'm not even an atheist. I, I'm, I'm what you might call an anti-theist. I, I think religion is a bad idea. I think it's a tool used by the powers that be to control the weak-minded in our society. But you can't pull that out of form. So I just write Church of England. <laughs> I'm actually a lapsed Catholic. Any Catholics in? Yeah. Oh, quite a few over there, yeah. I'm a lapsed Catholic. I knew my days were over in the Catholic Church when I found myself at communion thinking, I like the wine, I'm loving the wafer. <laughs> Any chance of a bit of cheese? <laughs> Don't get me wrong, though, I still respect the Pope. I like to think of the Pope as king of the pedos. He's the best one. He's the ring leader. <laughs> He's Gary Glitter's boss. <laughs> Did you see the story about Gary Glitter? There was a GCSE music question about Gary Glitter. How bad's that? How bad's that? A GCSE music question about a Gary Glitter song. Because if there's one artist you don't want associated with the phrase, shh, turn over, you've got an hour. <laughs> I should probably leave Glitter alone. He just wants to settle down and have kids. <laughs> well, I thought we might have some questions from you, the audience, but I often get asked the same things by audiences around the country, so I've prepared some frequently asked questions to go through first. Hmm. I get asked after every gig by men of a certain age. They'll go to me, you've been on Top Gear, who's the stick? Do you want to know? Yeah. It's the girl from the Zavirex ads. <laughs> I often get asked favourite colour. It's such a weird question because colour is all about context. For example, bright red. Bright red is a great colour for a sports car. It's a terrible colour for an anus. <laughs> <laughs> we all like green grass and trees and leaves. But discharge? <laughs> Everyone likes blue skies. But pensioners? Don't give me the ooh. I've already toned that down. That was originally dead babies. <laughs> Someone asked me recently, any grooming tips? I said, yeah, don't do it. It's illegal. <laughs> sorry, I can't help but notice. You look quite young there. How old are you, sir? Do you mind me asking? You're what, sorry? 13. You're 13? And, and you're... The, did, you, did you understand that grooming joke? Just I could explain it to you backstage after. <laughs> Most natural thing in the world. <laughs> are you who are you here with? Your dad? You're fine with this filth, aren't you, sir? <coughs> uh, are you fine with this level of filth? <laughs> Good, <laughs> you couldn't give a fuck. Brilliant. <laughs> 
Well, the good news is you've got a cool dad. <laughs> the bad news is you're going to have to go into care. <laughs> because he's not very responsible. <laughs> I, I get asked, what did you study? I did philosophy in English. Well, I say I did philosophy in English. What I mean is I thought about reading a book. <laughs> hmm. um, what did you do before you did this? I was backstage masturbating and crying. <laughs> what would you be if you weren't a famous comedian? I'd be a comedian you hadn't heard of. <laughs> Who's your favourite comedian of all time, ever? Well, I would have to say... me. <laughs> I know it sounds a little bit arrogant, but think about it. It is exactly my sense of humour. <laughs> People come up to me all the time and say, I love your sarcasm. I say, do you really? <laughs> I often get asked this, fair enough, he's a funny boy and he's doing very well for himself. People often ask me, are you related to Alan Carr? Yes, he's my sister. <laughs> <That's right. laughs> There's me, Alan and Maxine. <laughs> Us two were livid. When we found out Alan was gay. <laughs> I often get asked about that. People often ask me, have you ever had any gay experiences? Well, yes, I have had gay experiences. I've been in a shoe shop and said, I have to have them. <laughs> I've described a cheesecake as, to die for. <laughs> but I've never had the gay experience where someone puts their cock in my mouth and or bum. <laughs> and really, that is the one that counts. <laughs> yeah, it doesn't count if you do it to them, does it? I thought it wasn't gay if you didn't push back. <laughs> it's definitely not gay if you beat them up afterwards. <laughs> I often get asked this, what celebrity would you most like to sleep with? Angelina Jolie. I'd love to have a go on that. <laughs> She's an attractive woman, isn't she? I had a dream about her a couple of weeks ago. I'm not saying it was sexy. I had to get the sheets off with a toffee hammer. <laughs> That's a weird joke, isn't it? Because at once your mind has to go, uh, and, oh, toffee hams. <laughs> I realise I haven't got much of a chance with Angelina Jolie. She's with Brad Pitt. I've got a face like a potato. <laughs> My only chance with her is if I black up and check myself into a Mozambique orphanage. <laughs> but that could backfire. You could end up fucking Madonna. <laughs> People often ask me favourite joke, and it's not a bad question, because I spend my life writing books about jokes and thinking about jokes. I'm quite obsessed by jokes, so it's a fair question. I like sort of pub jokes that can drop a nice image in your head. I like, uh, why do women watch porn to the end? To see if they get married. <laughs> it's adorable, isn't it? I like this joke, because it's very northern, very Yorkshire joke. Any Yorkshire people in? Oh, well, I'll tell it in a Yorkshire accent to patronise you. We didn't have paedophiles when I were a lad. We had to buy our own sweets. <laughs> Come on. How Yorkshire is that? <laughs> I got told this one, just a pub joke. I got told it a couple of months ago just by a friend, and it just really tickled me. He said, what's the difference between jam and marmalade? I said, I don't know the difference between jam and marmalade. You'll have to tell me. He said, you can't marmalade your cock up a bird's ass." <laughs> I know, I know, I know, I know, I know, I know, it's a bit much, I know, but there's a good reason for me telling you that joke. Don't you find it awkward when the in-laws come to stay at your house? Do you find that weird when her mum and dad come and stay at your house? I find it a really weird, I feel like a child in my own home. Breakfast is the worst time for me because I'm not really a morning person anyway. All you can hear is the crunch of toast, slurping of tea, there's no conversation, it's just awkward. Yeah, everyone's in gym jams and robes, just weird. What I've given you there, a lovely little icebreaker. Because when her dad says, could you pass the jam? <laughs> Here's one for you. <laughs> no, don't cry, because you can jam you. <laughs> Has anyone got any questions this evening? Anything you'd like to know? Jimmy, yes. If, you were a comedian, so if, you, if I wasn't a comedian, yeah, if, you couldn't be a comedian, if I couldn't be a comedian, many people would say I can't be. <laughs> There is a school of thought that says, what the fuck is he doing? But, go on, if I couldn't be a comedian... What would you do as a lit for a living? What would you like to do? I, I, the same as you, I would dress up as Amelie. <laughs> and 
I'd wander the streets looking for adventure. <laughs> it's a good look. I'm, lo I'm loving that. But what do you do? I'm a student. You're a student. <laughs> Where are you, stu are you studying in London? Canterbury. Canterbury? Yes. Oh, never mind. Maybe if you'd worked a little bit harder for your A-levels. <laughs> Canterbury University, you say Canterbury, but what I hear is clearing. <laughs> yeah, there's, there's no shame in that, that's fine. Any other thoughts? Oh, go on, you've got one. What's the best thing that's ever happened to you? What's the best thing? The time we fucked. <laughs> I know you don't remember, but that is the wonder of Rohypnol. <laughs> Trust me, it was magical. Well, you are good. <laughs> no, 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 you're now saying you're good at fucking. That's great. I'll put that on my DVD and your mum and dad can watch. <laughs> <laughs> the man next to you, incidentally, is, is sort of going... Uh... <laughs> She's got a point. She's fucking marvellous. <laughs> Excellent. Nice to get a good review. Um, <laughs> any other thoughts, questions? He said, if you were a soup, what flavoured soup would you be? <laughs> is that who I think it is? Is that, is that the BFG? <laughs> what kind of a soup would you be? <laughs> I would be a lovely, delicious wonton soup. <laughs> I, I don't know what kind of a soup. What kind of a soup would you be? Is there a leading...? I'd be tomato and bass. <laughs> You've got the loveliest voice in the world. <laughs> what, sorry? Get you a date? Not a problem. Do you like 13 year old boys? <laughs> <laughs> sorry, mate. <laughs> We're all having a laugh. You're going, is that going to happen? I don't know. <laughs> You're fine. You're golden. And what, what's your name, sir? I'm Steve. Stephen. Steve. Steve. <laughs> what, what do you do, Steve? I'm a dentist. I'm a dentist. <laughs> and I like soup. <laughs> <laughs> You're never going to chip a tooth <coughs> on soup. <laughs> Said the BFG. <laughs> You're wasted. You should be doing voiceovers. It's lovely. There is a large titted slag that will fuck you. <laughs> That's very good. That's okay. It's got his lovely though, isn't it? She's, she's pretty hot. She's, she's all right. I don't know if you can see her. Can you see her there, Steve? She's all right. Stand could she stand up? <laughs> I don't think she could because you'll topple forward. <laughs> Would you like to have a go on that? <laughs> She said, woo, really, really quietly, but it picked up an echo from her normal. <laughs> it's going to be like throwing a sausage up an alleyway, but... <laughs> I'm only kidding. What's your name, madam? Tracy. Tracy. <laughs> of course it fucking is. <laughs> of course it is. Of course. Sorry, let's, I've, I've got to stop being silly black for a minute, but you two can meet in the lobby. You've got the same sense of humour, and she's, you know... Mm -hmm. she's easy. Uh, <laughs> she is easy. <laughs> when I was younger, I couldn't talk to women because I was hiding in their wardrobes, masturbating. <laughs> Would have totally given it away. You didn't see that coming, did you? <laughs> oh, I've written a rom-com. I wanted to tell you about this. I've written a romantic comedy. It's about a guy and a girl. Classic, yeah? Initially, they hate each other. Classic. But they end up in bed together. Classic. It's called The Rapist. <laughs> if you get arrested for making obscene phone calls and you get taken down to the station and you've got one phone call... <laughs> it's got to be a temptation, isn't it? <laughs> Excuse me, officer, I'm just going to finish myself off. 
You can say PC's gone mad and no one minds. People quite like it if you say PC's gone mad. Political correctness has gone mad. They like that. But if you say PC's gone fucking spastic like a mong rapist... <laughs> people get quite chippy. <laughs> Sorry, I should clarify. When I say fucking spastic like a mong rapist, I mean a rapist that rapes mongs, not a mong that rapes. <laughs> I don't want to offend anyone. <laughs> Although, thinking about it, getting raped by a mong, not as bad. <laughs> At least you get a cuddle afterwards. <laughs> Although, good luck in the police lineup. <laughs> uh, they all look a bit samey. <laughs> Swings and roundabouts are what they like. <laughs> while we're on the subject of Down syndrome, and that's not a line you hear enough. <laughs> but while we're on the subject of Down syndrome, don't they have enough to worry about without the haircut? What sadistic barber is thinking this fella's not getting bullied enough? <laughs> what about a bowl cut? <laughs> Last July, I was in Regent's Park, just hanging out with a couple of friends on a beautiful summer's day. I saw a Muslim woman in full kit... <laughs> or it's not called kit. <laughs> hijab, burqa, yashmak, the full thing, yeah? Rollerblading. <laughs> It looked amazing. Because <laughs> it was such a hot day, it looked like someone's shadow had got up and <laughs> fucked it. <laughs> no, obviously, that's a joke about religious dress, not a joke about ethnicity or race, because I say Muslim woman, but I don't know for sure. <laughs> you can't really tell with that sort of outfit, can you? <laughs> Could have been a Catholic fella for under there, for all I know. <laughs> or a ninja. <laughs> there used to be a problem with racism in this country. When my family moved here from, from Limerick, when my family moved here from Limerick in the 1970s, it was still commonplace, yeah, to have signs in hotels and B&Bs in the window saying, no blacks, no dogs, no Irish. I thought this country had changed and changed for the better. I'm not so sure. I was in a shop the other day. They had a sign up saying, checks not accepted. <laughs> it's a disgrace. I saw a thing on Sky News, the bloke went, should Eastern European immigration be stopped? Let's see what the polls have to say. <laughs> it's a very poor choice of words. Some people eat roadkill. Have you heard about this? They take stuff that's been mowed down on the streets, they scrape it up, they clean it, they cook it, they eat it. Fine, but what you've got to accept is some of these kids have got families. <laughs> I got a couple of speeding tickets last year. I've got to be super careful now. I've got six points on my licence, so I've got this special device. Some of you have probably got it too. It sits on the dashboard, tells you if there's a speed camera in the street, makes a beeping noise. It goes beep, 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 to warn you there's a speed camera. Also makes a noise if there's a child in the road. It goes, ba-dum, ba-dum. <laughs> what? Last week, I ran over a kid carrying a symbol. <laughs> ba-dum, shh. What's not to like it? It's a joke about killing a child in a music hall style. <laughs> <laughs> Premature ejaculation. <laughs> is a problem for many men. Well, I say it's a problem for men. Mainly it's a problem for women. <laughs> what do we care? We're asleep. <laughs> you can now get practically invisible spray-on condoms which have been designed specifically for gullible women. <laughs> you can get condoms that are ribbed for her pleasure. So what I do, turn them inside out, please myself. <laughs> oh, you're probably wondering why I've asked you here this evening. <laughs> I wanted to talk to you about relationships and sex and love, and I wanted to give you some advice, yeah? Because it is nice to talk about that sort of thing, and everyone can relate to it, because you're either in a happy relationship, yeah? Or you want to get into a happy relationship, yeah? Or, or, or maybe you're comfort-eating and living with too many cats. <laughs> or happily single, as you call it. <laughs> so I was going to give you some advice about relationships and, you know, that sort of thing. I thought we might talk to the single men first. Who are the single men? Give us a shout. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> mm. 
said the single men. Yeah, that's probably why you're single. <laughs> OK, if you're on a date with a woman, do tell her you've got feelings for her. Don't tell her it's an erection. <laughs> do walk her home, don't follow her home. <laughs> do surprise her, don't wear a balaclava. <laughs> do offer to pay for dinner, don't offer to pay for anything else. <laughs> Unless it's Tracy, in which case a bag of chips will get you laid. <laughs> <laughs> it's a good indicator that a woman fancies you if when you're talking to her, she touches her hair. If it's her pubic hair, it's a cert. <laughs> women like the strong, silent type. That's because when we're quiet, they think we're listening. <laughs> what are you like, ladies? It can be a bit depressing being a single man. It can be, can be a bit of a bore like. I've got an inspirational story this will cheer you up. It concerns my friend Emily. She's beautiful, she's intelligent, and she's funny. She's a triple threat. She's on a date with a guy about two months ago. They're having dinner across from each other. Main course arrives, lasagna as it happens, OK? He leans across to her plate, takes a massive bit of her lasagna, boom, eats it. Without saying anything. Does it again, like, 30 seconds later. Another massive bit, boom, eats it. Off her plate. Does it for the third time, boom. All she said was, what are you doing? He came back with this, he said, I'm paying for it, aren't I? <laughs> I know. <laughs> the reason I think that's an inspirational story she still fucked him. <laughs> I can't believe he's lucky. He got laid and had half a lasagna. <laughs> Is anyone actually on a date this evening? I can see a few people I think might be on dates, but I, I don't want to kind of embarrass you because dates are anxious enough anyway. They're fraught with anxiety, aren't they, being on a date? Because you don't know when you're going to move in for the kiss. You don't know how it's going to end up later on. They're just... they're weird and awkward. So I'd like to break the ice for you. If I'm... I'll break the ice for you. Yeah. Why not suggest fucking in the disabled toilets? <laughs> That's what they're for. <laughs> That's why they've got that handrail for more exotic positioning. <laughs> Don't give me that look. In my defence, when I was in there, I was fucking a cripple. <laughs> and I'm 90% sure it was consensual. <laughs> How was it? How was it? <laughs> yeah. But that is Parkinson's for you. <laughs> I think clapping a Parkinson's joke is <laughs> in poor taste, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> People do seem obsessed by where others are having sex. The Mile High Club is a good example. Any members of the Mile High Club in? Yeah. 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 Doesn't count if you're on your own. <laughs> you know that, right? No, the Mile High Club making love in a plane. Yeah. Sounds exotic and glamorous, doesn't it? But what you're really saying is we fucked in a chemical toilet. <laughs> Obviously, there's a budget version for you. Top deck of a bus, fingering. <laughs> Are you paying attention? That's all in the wrist. Don't go in with that hand, you'll fall to yourself. You put your shoulder out, keep that hand free for ticketing. <laughs> this is fun and we're learning things. Men and women are different. Now, I know we all know that in our heads, but the more you can accept that in your hearts, I think the better, the easier life is. Right? Yeah. Hmm. Some examples. Women like to relax in a hot bath with candles and oils. Men, generally, prefer to masturbate in the shower. <laughs> yeah, we know what you're up to in there, ladies. Why does this loofah smell funny? <laughs> <laughs> Some advice for the ladies. I had a woman come up to me after the show a couple of weeks ago. She said, I think you're very sexist. I said, I think you find it's pronounced sexy. <laughs> Run along, grown-ups talking. <laughs> Ladies, if a man says he likes foreign films, porn. <laughs> if a man says he enjoys long walks in the countryside, it might mean he's a romantic soul. It's more likely he's saying, they'll never find your body. <laughs> when women put out on a first date, men don't like that. We love it. <laughs> Yeah, I, I, I've, you know, I, I read a thing. It said that 98% of men are happy to have sex on a first date. I thought, well, happy? We're high-fiving strangers on a night bus. <laughs> hey, hey. Ho, oh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> Good. <clears throat> of course, a lot of women don't want to have sex on a first date, even if they want to have sex on a first date, because they think if they have sex on a first date, it makes them a slag or a slut or something. Well, not anymore, ladies. You're going to have to do more than that to be a slag these days. Am I right, Tracy? 
I'm just saying that like having sex on a first date just means you wanted to have sex on a first date. That's all it means. To be a slag these days, you're going to have to do so much more. I've got friends that are slags. My friend Louise is a slag. She's got five kids <laughs> by seven different dads. <laughs> She's got a speech impediment that prevents her from saying no. Well, I say it's a speech impediment, it's actually a cock in her mouth. <laughs> She's such a slag, the council trims her bush. <laughs> I've, got, I've got a question. I've got a question for the men. Have you ever seen a woman so unattractive to you, it makes you question your sexuality? I'll explain, because for me it would be like Gillian McKeith. You know the woman from How Clean Is Your Poo? <laughs> Weird looking creature. So if you put Gillian McKeith there and Brad Pitt there, and you said to me, your life depends on it, you've got to do it with one of them. You've got to make the beast with two backs. Do the sticky belly. <laughs> what? I would think, right, I'm a heterosexual man, Gillian is a woman, Gillian is. Oh. <laughs> ah. Jesus. <laughs> Give it here. <laughs> Is that bad? Does that make me half rice, half chips? <laughs> you were right. Well, what? Okay, let me give you a moral dilemma. What's your name? I didn't get your name, Ali. Marcus. Marcus. Okay. Moral dilemma for you. All right. Anne Widdicombe. George Clooney. If you had to. <coughs> You'd go for Anne Widdicombe. Ah. Oh, you mental. <laughs> she's got a face like a bulldog licking the piss off a nettle. <laughs> and she's a hell of a size, you're a slip of a lad, she'd fuck you in half. <laughs> and that is only where your problems begin, because I imagine her pitchy pouch, her la la, her foo foo, her Wendy, <laughs> her special lady garden, call it what you will, I bet it looks like a badger that's been hit with a shotgun. <laughs> I bet there are police divers that would be squeamish about going down on that. <laughs> I bet it looks like a bulldog eating mayonnaise. <laughs> I bet George Clooney's got the prettiest cock you've ever seen. <laughs> Why don't you just spit roast her? You're suggesting I double team <laughs> Anne Widdicombe with George Clooney. <laughs> Now that is a celebrity sex tape that would sell. <laughs> <laughs> Someone said that the other day, Marcus. Someone was as macho as you the other day. They went to, uh, well, yeah, Anne Whittacombe, just put a bag over it. <laughs> really? <laughs> Has that ever happened, ladies? <laughs> How low would your self esteem have to be <laughs> that you would fuck a guy who's just gone, can I just. <laughs> That's better. <laughs> chat up line. Let's do some chat up lines, okay? Obviously, the best chat up line is Will you hold my pint while I go for a shit? <laughs> <laughs> Steve, everyone. And his brilliant chat up line If you were a soup, <laughs> what flavour of soup would you be? <laughs> I, I, well, I think that's right up there with, does this rag smell of chloroform to you? <laughs> and the evergreen, let's not turn this rape into a murder. <laughs> <clears throat> the problem with chat-up lines is you know whether they're going to work pretty much immediately. You know straight away whether the girl's thinking you're a dick or buy us a drink, OK? So I've written some abort mission lines for you, so you could be sort of halfway through a chat-up scenario and you can abort the mission if you think it's going badly, right? So it would work like this. You would say, do you want to dance? She'd have a face like thunder. You'd go, can I have your seat? <laughs> yeah. Did you hurt yourself when you fell from heaven? Because it looks like you landed on your face. <laughs> I've never seen a more beautiful woman in my life. So can you move? <laughs> Here's ten pence, ring your mum. Tell her be around in half an hour to fuck her. <laughs> Get your coat you've pulled. Hang on, wait, you probably don't own a coat. Girls your size tend not to feel the cold. <laughs> and my personal favourite, save this for someone special. Your father must have been a thief, because you look like a pikey.
let's talk about gifts, because gifts are very important when you're in a relationship. They show your partner how you feel about them. This is interesting. My girlfriend suggested last Christmas that we limit ourselves to £20 for each other's presents. But I wasn't thinking about spending that kind of money. <laughs> Obviously, if you're buying gifts for a woman, it's pretty easy. You just go for the classics. You know, champagne, chocolates, flowers. Unless you're dating an alcoholic bulimic with hay fever. <laughs> I buy my girlfriend flowers every week because I really fancy the girl in the florist. <laughs> I've told the girl in the florist my girlfriend's dead. <laughs> I thought it was a good idea at the time. It slightly backfired. You try explaining to your other half why you got her a wreath four weeks in a row. <laughs> Obviously, different flowers express different emotions. So, for example, red flowers say passion. Yellow flowers say love. And self-raising flower says, make me a cake. <laughs> My girlfriend said recently, she said, we need some romance in our lives. So I took the hint, I booked a hotel, flowers, chocolate, champagne, petals on the bed, the full bit, ended up having incredible sex. Of course, it turned out she wanted me to take her. <laughs> What's the fucking point of that? I live with her. <laughs> She'll be there when I get back. <laughs> Put the kettle on, love and fucking knackered. <laughs> I'm not saying I feel cheated, but when we got together, she said to me, she said, I'm very liberal about sex. I don't care what people do as long as they're consenting adults and no one gets hurt. There's always a catch, isn't there? <laughs> no one gets hurt. Consenting. <laughs> adults. <laughs> Basically, no fun. <laughs> right, some sex tips. Let's try and be grown up about this, yeah? Gentlemen, if you're having sex with a new partner for the first time, never take a run-up. <laughs> I know what you like, you want to make a good first impression, but you don't want to actually leave a dent. <laughs> a lot of women don't like it if you leave your socks on during sex, but I always leave one on because I don't want to get her pregnant. <laughs> hmm. Some women don't like to have the lights on, but it can't be helped in my case because they come on automatically when I open the car door. <laughs> and then they stay on for 20 seconds, so it is over. <laughs> this isn't advice, this is more of a reminder, and it's a reminder to men in long-term relationships, because standards can slide as a relationship goes on. Just a reminder for the men in long-term relationships, it is never acceptable, never acceptable, yeah, to answer the phone when lovemaking. Even if you hilariously pick up by saying, I can't talk now, I'm going into a tunnel. <laughs> Some common myths you may have heard. These are just myths, they're not true. The best lubricant for anal sex is not tears. <laughs> it's blood. I bought some KY jelly, it said on the box not to be taken internally. I thought, where do they think it's fucking going? <laughs> <laughs> if you are going to have sex, I can't stress this enough, if you're going to have sex with someone that you don't know, always, always, always ask. <laughs> Very important. Let's talk about sexual health, shall we? Uh, STDs, STIs and the like, because there's a big difference, my young friend, between giving a girl goosebumps and giving her a rash. <laughs> what? Have you all seen the advert where the girl's got AIDS written on a bra and chlamydia written on her knickers? Well, that is no way to tell your partner. <laughs> it turns out. <laughs> chlamydia, though, that's the one you want to get. That's the gold standard of STIs. It's the best one. I was chatting to a friend who's a proper doctor. He said, chlamydia is rife, and the worst thing is, there are no symptoms. I said, how is it even a disease? <laughs> he said, it can make a woman infertile. I said... <laughs> I'll throw away these condoms then, shall I? <laughs> the only way chlamydia could get any better is if the discharge was a pizza. <laughs> the women are thinking, that is disgusting. And the men are thinking, that would be brilliant. <laughs> Can I just make the point, there's a lot of young ladies in today. Can I just make the point, it is totally socially acceptable for young women to carry condoms in their purse or in their bag. Of course it is. But a young man carrying a coil is weird. <laughs> Do you know how the coil contraceptive device works? No, I, well, I'll explain. Think of me as a kindly uncle. <laughs> shh, shh, shh. No. <laughs> 
The way the coil contraceptive device works is that the lady says to the man, I've got a piece of coiled metal somewhere in my JJ," <laughs> And the man goes off the idea. <laughs> You've got a bit of metal where? <laughs> Any chance of a gob job? <laughs> Let's talk about breakups, because breakups can be hard, can't they? It's not you, it's me is a terrible way to break up with someone, but not as bad as it's not you, it's her. <laughs> Women give us the silent treatment, because they think it's a punishment. <laughs> We've got a special name for the silent treatment, we call it peace and quiet. <laughs> I don't want to sound misogynistic, but I think breakups are easier for women than they are for men, because I think women have got a support network of friends and family that they really talk to about their actual emotions. What have men got in a breakup to fall back on? All we've got is our mates. I had it happen recently with my friend Russell. He broke up with his wife. They'd been married for four years, together for six. And she's left him for another guy. What do you say? I don't have the vocabulary to have that kind of emotional conversation. I ended up falling back on the old cliches. I said, there's plenty more fish in the sea. He said, yeah, but it's not just the smell I miss. <laughs> Well, on that cerebral and edifying note, has anyone got any questions or queries about sex or relationships? Anything you need to know? What's your favourite position? I like reverse cowgirl, but, you know, <laughs> I'm old-fashioned that way. <laughs> uh, what, what's yours, sir? Various. 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 <laughs> I think I can... I th it's a match, eh? Pick and mix. Yeah, I imagine... Well, it's either that... <laughs> ..or that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Maybe better that, who knows? Yeah, treat yourself, why not? <laughs> what wouldn't you do that your missus would ask you to do? What wouldn't I do that my missus would ask me to do? Stop. <laughs> I was parked earlier on a single yellow line and I was worried about the traffic warden coming when I wasn't there, so I left a little note on the windscreen for the traffic warden. Do you do that? I always leave a note. Saying, oi, Trevor Warden cunt, I fucked your mum. <laughs> <laughs> Apparently, the rear passenger side of the car is the safest place to be in an accident. Yeah. Although I think if you're back there, it might explain why you crashed. <laughs> <laughs> if it's an offence to impersonate a policeman, why have we got community support officers? <laughs> My girlfriend's got one of those tiny little strips of hair. What are they called? Moustache. <laughs> Landing strip? She's only 12. <laughs> I'm joking. She's got a landing strip. <laughs> She's a very hairy little girl. Uh, <laughs> I've slightly upset myself with that. <laughs> She's a vegetarian. Any other vegetarians in? A few vegetarians around? She's, uh, Caroline's vegetarian. She thinks it's disgusting that I eat veal. But she eats baby carrots. <laughs> <laughs> They're babies. <laughs> of course, some women can eat whatever they want, they don't want anyway. And they're called bitches. <laughs> <laughs> Not that I don't mind the fuller figure, I quite like the larger lady. I went out with a girl once who was quite a lot larger. Yeah. When she sat around the house, she sat around the house. <laughs> if you had a pillow fight, you had to use a duvet. <laughs> I undressed her with my eyes. It took me 45 minutes. <laughs> I tried to spoon with her. It's more like a ladle. <laughs> I've got a photo of her somewhere, taken by Google Earth. <laughs> my girlfriend and I are trying for a baby. We got pretty close outside Asda last Saturday. <laughs> I was in Los Angeles last year doing a bit of work and I got stopped at the airport. They said, purpose of visit? I said, I'm here to shoot a pilot. <laughs> That's three hours of my life I'm not getting back. <laughs> I was told when I was 12 years of age by my Catholic priest, he said to me, God is watching you when you masturbate. I said, is he a pedo too far? <laughs> I'm joking, I said, is he a pedo too far? <laughs> Now, that joke may be offensive to Catholics, but it's not the only reason I like it. <laughs> the thing about Childline... 
I haven't said anything yet. <laughs> the thing about Childline is now we have a generation of children that can't keep a secret. <laughs> I know that doesn't sound very charitable, but let me leave you with this. Ten pence from the sale of every one of my DVDs goes to the poor, underprivileged children of Cambodia. Who manufacture them? <laughs> Listen, I'll be Jimmy Carr. Thank you very much indeed for coming out. Cheers. Cheers. I'd like, to, uh, I'd like to take this opportunity to dedicate the gig this evening to Tupac. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I miss him. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'd like to dedicate the gig to uh, Caroline, my girlfriend, a more beautiful, hard-working, dedicated woman could not be found. <laughs> Despite exhaustive and ongoing research on my part. <laughs> I got a lovely note before the gig this evening from someone's dad. He's here with his daughter. She's 16 today, I believe, and she's here with some friends celebrating her birthday. I don't know where you're sitting. Your dad was wondering if you could get an autograph after the show. I'll do better than that. Bring her backstage. I'll finger her. <laughs> I'm joking. <laughs> I'll fuck her. I often get asked after the show, the most common question after a show is, what's the most offensive joke? What's the worst joke? Now, I don't think I can tell you the most offensive joke. Because I think offence is taken, not given. That's not just an expression. That is how it tends to work. Different people take offence at different things. So I can't tell you what the most offensive joke is. But we could see. <laughs> we could start gentle and work our way up and see at what stage, as an audience, you go, ha, oh, for fuck's sake. <laughs> Do you want to give it a go? OK, well, let's start gently. Baby steps. All right, we'll start gentle. Very sad when Princess Diana died. And all London got was that shitty fountain. <laughs> Still better than Paris, all they got was a slow down sign. <laughs> no one that offended. But you should have heard the fuss when I suggested it on the Royal Variety. <laughs> Do you remember where you were when you heard Diana died? Yeah. yeah. I was in Kensington Gardens thinking, this place needs something. <laughs> the Twin Towers... <laughs> ..was the best of the Lord of the Rings films. <laughs> no, The Twin Towers. Do you think it would have seemed less tragic if they hadn't been twins? <laughs> <laughs> I'll be honest with you, I feel more sorry for the people in the second tower than the people in the first tower. Do you? Because the people in the second tower, imagine that. Imagine you get into work one morning, the building next to yours, identical to yours, gets hit by a fucking plane. What's your first thought going to be? We dodged a bullet. <laughs> Unlucky. <laughs> Five minutes later, oh, for fuck's sake. <laughs> OK, you all seem fine so far. Let's go up a gear in terms of offence. When a dog is on heat, it means it wants sex. That is my defence. <laughs> It's a good area for offence, that, isn't it? The weird sexual things that other people do that you've heard about, you'd never dream of doing, but you've heard about. Felching is a good example. <laughs> it's even a horrible word, felching. For those of you that don't know, felching is the retrieval of sperm from the anal canal via suction. <laughs> I know. How mental's that? <laughs> it's like fucking someone in the arse and then going, I take that back. No one offended by felching. OK, let's go up another gear. <laughs> I've got a friend that recently had an abortion. But on the positive side, slimmer of the month. <laughs> she got a badge and a round of applause. She can't believe her luck. <laughs> on the subject of abortions, a lot of people support a woman's right to choose. But I think, if I'm paying for it... <laughs> I'm joking, I never pay. Doesn't cost anything to fall down the stairs, does it? <laughs> Some of these girls, I swear, they think I'm made of coat hangers. <laughs> well, I've got a few of you. Yeah? <laughs> Just a few, a few of the hardcore not offended by anything so far. 
see if we can pick you off. <laughs> I discovered the hard way, the worst way to start a benefit gig for abused children is with an apology. <laughs> I said I was sorry, I don't see what the fuss was about. <laughs> if men fall asleep directly after sex, why is it so difficult to catch a rapist? <laughs> No one offended. Right, let's bring out the big guns. <laughs> Hitler and Pol Pot. Unquestionably two of history's biggest cunts. But let's try and see the good in the bad. And both Hitler and Pol Pot managed to conduct an awful lot of medical research without hurting any animals. <laughs> I put it to you, if you're not even a little bit offended, you haven't really understood that. <laughs> this next joke is just a simple piece of wordplay. It's a little turn on a very common phrase. Yeah, just a little bit of wordplay. The joke isn't about what the joke's about, if you follow me. It's about the wordplay. Yeah, you know it's going to be offensive <laughs> if it comes with a little warning before that. <laughs> <laughs> they say there's safety in numbers. Yeah? Tell that to six million Jews. <laughs> Really, London? Really? A round of applause? Because <laughs> to my mind, that should be the most offensive joke, not just in the show, but in the world ever. Because <laughs> content-wise, that's a joke about the worst thing that's ever happened. The Holocaust. Six million lives taken by an industrialised killing machine, the Nazis. That's the worst thing in human history, and that's a joke about that. But it's not that offensive a joke. It's not anti-Semitic, it's not racist, it doesn't hate anyone. I mean, it's in bad taste. I'll give you that. Because <laughs> it's, it's taking lightly something very serious, and that's like the definition of bad taste. I put my hand up to bad taste. Obviously, I put my hand up like that, not like that. <laughs> that's only going to make things worse. <laughs> Never high-five a rabbi. <laughs> No, the most offensive joke in the world, if you judge it by offence caused, yeah, the, the, the kind of consequence of the joke, rather than the content of the joke, is actually a cartoon done four years ago, yeah? Caused more offence than any other joke in human history. It was a Mohammed with a bomb as a hat, done by a Danish man. There was protesting all over the Islamic world. They don't like iconography at the best of times. They certainly don't like people taking the piss. <laughs> so there was protesting all over the Islamic world. Some of those protests turned into riots. Three Danish embassies burnt to the ground and ten people lost their lives in rioting, all because of a joke about somebody's imaginary friend. <laughs> I'll be honest with you, I think some of the Islamic world slightly overreacted. I think the Iranian government slightly overreacted. They decided to boycott all Danish products. Now, I'm not sure they were doing a roaring trade in pornography, <laughs> beer and bacon before. <laughs> So that is, for what it's worth, the most offensive joke in the world ever. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for coming to the show tonight. Thank you so much for buying the DVD if you're watching this at home. <laughs> Just a quick thing before I go. The worst thing about being told you've got Alzheimer's... <laughs> ..is it doesn't just happen the once. <laughs> and so be Jimmy Carr, thank you very much indeed. Thank you for coming to the show. 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 Come up with a face thing. Take care. Thank you. Hello and welcome to Anti-Social Networking. Uh, it's sort of like a Twitter extra. It was free. What do you want? Lots of questions about where I'll be playing on the Rapier Wit tour. Everywhere. This tour will have a carbon footprint like a Wookiee. What will happen if they close the library? Will our children grow illiterate? Will knowledge be lost forever? Where will tramps go to poo? Hmm. Shh. Love the idea of going to this much trouble to express indifference. 
Very lucky with my audience. Funny people. At the Natural History Museum, these evolutionists are mental with their dinosaurs and their magical shapeshifters. The baby Jesus made us all. I'd love to be a monkey, throwing excrement and masturbating all day. What's this guy so grumpy about? They should bring people with eating disorders to this room. I feel so skinny. It's odd that we call them pirates, so very old-fashioned. If you get mugged, you don't call the bloke that did it a highwayman. Seamen thieves has been suggested as an alternative to pirates. Sounds to me like a gentleman's special interest film. French warship captures pirates. Presumably that only happened once they'd exhausted the retreat, surrender and collaboration options. How many man hours are lost after every bank holiday to conversations that go, is it Wednesday already? It feels like a Tuesday. It's sad, people have forgotten what Easter is all about. It's not about chocolate eggs and stuff in your face. It's about cute bunny rabbits. That prison riot is on the news, looks pretty bad. Those guys want locking up. Multiple choice today. Have I been A, decapitated, B, bullied, C, asleep on the beach? I just think, if you volunteer, you should be allowed to commit a minor offence and get off. You've already served the community. Fair is fair. I've had an idea for the G20 leaders trying to repair the economy and promote peace. We set up some sort of World Trade Centre. Hang on. Retweet. That'd be a pretty big building. You might need two of them. Good point. Well made. Just been for a swim. Some seawater got in my eye, so I came back to the room to wash it with saline solution. Most pointless thing ever. The clocks going forward is a massive waste of time. That's almost a joke. With Arts Council funding and time and thought, that could work. Just bumped into Chris Hoy, the gold-winning cyclist. I think it's even more impressive that he got gold in China. Everyone's got a bike there. Lost the tennis today, but a joy to play outdoors. I've just spotted Men's Health have done a fitness special, as opposed to... Begs the question, what's the most redundant thing printed on the front of a magazine? I saw a Vogue fashion special once. Any thoughts? I once heard a senior police officer interviewed about the new Crime Reduction Initiative. Isn't that just the day job? Is International Women's Day just a bigger version of Ladies' Night? Spotted this, a device for shaping a woman's special lady garden. The next tweet will show you why I laughed. Who buys a bush shaper for their mum? on Mother's Day. Thoughts whilst eating. Crispy seaweed is basically deep fried salad. It's both delicious and paradoxical. I've just seen loads of midgets coming out of a building all wearing the same thing. Hang on, they're children. A nice lady from Lancashire on the tube has just asked me, do you know who you are? Someone's just said, Everyone's fond of owls. A bird with a cat's head? Deeply suspicious. The politicians' expenses thing is just embarrassing. There are South American politicians laughing at our £23 for cat food bullshit scandal. Twitter is now an important tool for Iran's pro-democracy movement. When will they realise it's not for that, it's for celeb tittle-tattle? Swine flu panic. It was only a few years ago that bird flu killed half my friends and family. Hang on, wait, my mistake. We'll be fine. 
This piss-poor political scandal is making me misty-eyed for the days of amyl nitrate-soaked oranges and suspender-clad death wanks. I spent the whole day listening to the radio. Such a good week for news junkies. Weird that the papers are the same size, whatever happens. Everyone's still going on about Susan Boyle. I can't see it. I just don't think she's that hot. Can you hear me? Is maybe the most pointless thing you could possibly say, along with no comment and are you asleep? Justin Morehouse made an interesting point this morning about the difference between comics you go to see and comics you go to listen to. Hmm. I'm about to go on stage in South End. It would be South End on Sea, but the tide is out. <laughs> you know when you get Scottish money and people can be a bit weird about accepting it? Well, it's not like that in Glasgow. Brilliant. At Biggest Doggus. If Captain Cook was indeed born in Middlesbrough, that might very well explain him fucking off to the other side of the world. Has anyone ever seen a more welcoming pub? The glamour of Cleethorpes. What now? According to one Twitterer earlier, Dundee has only one nightclub, Fat Sam's, named after the local beauty queen. I've got to stop. Glasgow on a Friday night. I love a challenge. A heckler at the Empire in the 50s once shouted, it's all very funny if you like laughing. I like to think of Dundee as the Paris of the North because it's covered in dog shit and nobody washes. Good idea for an opening line tonight? Just been told Dundee is the city of discovery, presumably because the Discovery Channel made a wildlife documentary about the locals. Just got talking to a woman who said Manchester's Chinatown is better than London's Chinatown. I said, you should see the one in Hong Kong. From Manchester to Cheltenham to Birmingham today, I'm really getting value for money out of that road tax. Please don't worry about my safety in Basingstoke tonight. There is a simple action guide. Central Station on a bright, crisp day. This statue outside seems to say, Glasgow is the future, post-apocalypse. I'm in Warrington's cultural quarter. No disrespect to this fine town, but maybe a cultural eighth might be a more fitting name. Just check the best way to get to Milton Keynes on my iPhone, and it's advised me that it's a one day and 20 hour walk. I think I might drive. I'm guessing the reason for all the roundabouts in Milton Keynes is to give visitors plenty of chances to turn back. I'm having a knife crime in Croydon. Sorry, nice time. It's 1974 here. Just spotted this statue in Leicester. I think it should be called Badly Organised Sports Day. Retweet at Craig552UK. It commemorates the battle of the double-booked AstroTurf. We lost many good sportsmen that day. Milton Keynes on a sunny afternoon looks like the future looked in 80s science fiction. And someone's stolen my tent. I'm sure I remember Stonehenge being bigger and more, well, stony. Two shows tonight in Dunstable which sounds like a brand of hair removal cream. Dunstable. What happens if an unattractive woman wants to use these facilities? In Brighton, the gay capital and the fastest growing city in Britain. How's that happening exactly? I'm in Chatham this evening. The town planning was done by German men in planes in the 1940s. A bit of reverse inventing today, off to lunch with some old school friends, like a real life version of Friends Reunited. Can't wait. Coke without the sugar or flavourings. Good idea, but if this clear liquid doesn't taste of anything, won't people think it's spit? What if there was a live feed of the iPlayer beamed into your house, so you wouldn't have to choose what to watch or when to watch it? 
I'm loving the indoor cash machine that's actually a person idea. Lovely reverse inventing. I've had an idea. You know the I Love You Man bromance movie? Well, we make one, but instead of a guy mandating, he goes out with a girl. This is just getting better and better. An invention that allows everyone to have bottled water on tap. I love it. At Miss Box. Very good idea, but what if one of these motionless escalators broke down? People will be stuck forever. At Chubby Ewok. Quality reverse inventing. A solid brick tent. I'm interested in developing a remote control that's actually integrated into the TV so the buttons are on your television. What about if contact lenses were massive, really, really big, too big to go in your eyes? You'd have to sort of wear them on your face. At Just Call Me Slow. I love it. All the shops in a shopping mall spread out into streets. What if instead of out of town, they were in town? You know Sat Nav? I've just come up with a way of printing it out into a large format book. You could keep it in the car. I call it Maps. Regent's Park gig tonight was great fun. I told some jokes, but the real star was the weather. It was fucking mild. I'm at the 8 out of 10 cats record. This may be the most flattering photo ever taken of Clarkson. Put my name to this letter in the paper today. That should stop any Guardian readers from voting BMP. Job done. Got to Stoke pretty easily, despite my car's refusal to believe in the M6 toll road. If Satnav could cry, it would have. We're not talking. Just about to do QI. Any random facts welcome. I love this show but it's a bit like sitting an exam on a subject you've not studied. There's a TA parachute regiment. They're thrown out of the plane once they run out of bombs in the hope they land on something important. The Territorial Army Bomb Disposal Unit is based in Tunbridge. I have visions of a man called Terry kicking a bomb to see what happens. spotted this and felt it my duty to pass it on. Weirdly, all the security asked for photos. It was very friendly. At lunch, and the table next to mine had amazing looking scampi, so I asked the waiter to steal me one. They didn't even notice that is service. I'm in Eastbourne at the Congress Theatre, originally called the fucking theatre, but locals objected. Good game of tennis this morning with JR. He lost focus somewhat when a dog got stuck under a shed. Federer doesn't have these problems. Just recording the new DVD. Really enjoyed it. It's the audience interaction I really enjoy. I suppose those are the bits I haven't heard. Agent Provocateur and Victoria's Secrets had better watch out. There's a new player in the market and they're classy. The Cote d'Azur is all very well, but does it offer Folkestone's parking facilities? I think not. A few people let me know that they were offended by some of my tweets. Maybe when I do it, it's anti-social networking. Hello, I'm Jimmy Carr, and that was, that was an old clip of me. That happened in the past uh, when I was funny. I'm still funny now. Come and see me live on tour. Join in. IRL. Yeah, kids.